Debbie Marcou is licensed by the Department of Business Oversight under the California Residential Mortgage Lender Act, NMLS ID 237926. Also licensed in Arizona, 0941504, Florida, 76508, Georgia, 69178, Illinois, 031.0058339, Nevada, 57237, Oregon, Tennessee, 184373, Texas, Washington, 237926. Heidi Cycle Points, DBO, 1666881, Arizona, 101648. She's a mortgage mom. She can get things done. When you're in need and don't know where to go, pick up the phone and call mom. This is, I'm Debbie Marku with Mortgage Mom Radio, and I've got Heather Kilpatrick with me, another loan officer on the Mortgage Mom Radio team and a real estate agent of 30 minus years. And she is going to be bringing to you live this home buyer workshop. I believe we're unit number 12 at this point. I could be wrong. We could be 11, could be 12, we could be 13. But I'm pretty sure that we're 12 at this point. We're unit number 12. But this is how do you pick the right real estate agent? So first, what we're going to do is we're going to tell you how to get in touch with us how to talk to us, how do you find us, and then we're going to get into the the good stuff. So what is the first thing that they do, Heather? You're out, you're showing property, and mm-hmm. what is the best way for you to answer questions when people say, well, what would this house cost me? What would my payment look like? You have a wonderful app that they're going to go ahead and text MOM to 36260, and then when that app is going to, it's going to send you a link, and you're going to click on that link, and then you're going to go ahead and download your app to your phone. Yep. And you can do it on Android or iPhone. And it is amazing because it lets you plug in any numbers that you want within reason. you got to be smart about it. And it will bring up for you whatever numbers you plug in. It'll bring up for you your payment. So if you're looking at buying a home for 500000 you can put that in there. You can put your interest rate in there. And you can put in all the information you need, like loan type and property values, things like that. If you have HOAs, you can put all of that in there, and then you can just, it'll calculate for you what your payment will be. So you don't even need to call from the phone. You can just sit there on your phone and do all that. You can do it right from the home itself. It's perfect. Yeah. So you're looking at the house and you want to know what is this going to cost me? It's right there. You've got a calculator. What do you need to know? You need to know if you're doing an FHA loan, a VA loan, a USDA loan, a conventional loan, because you need to actually select which mortgage uh, calculator that you want it to run. And you need to know about what interest rates are and you need to know how much money that you're putting down, right? Those are really important things to get that calculator to work. Yes. You also need to know your credit score because guess what, guys? There's a lot of people out there that are not putting down 20%. Mm-hmm. If you're not putting down 20%, you're going to have mortgage insurance unless you're a vet or you're doing a USDA loan. So if you have your if you have your credit score and it runs the payment, it will actually pull the mortgage insurance rates and it will show you what a complete full monthly payment will be, principal, interest, taxes, insurance, and mortgage insurance. And that is really important because when you go to those calculators that are on, you know, realtor.com or Zillow yeah. or what a lot of times they're not calculating that and they're not calculating taxes and they're not calculating insurance. And if they are, they're calculating what the current homeowner's taxes are. Those are not your taxes, people. Right. Not only that, but they always are automatically set up as if you're putting 20% down, which is a huge like misconception or they're putting an incorrect rate or they're putting the taxes as like 1.15. And here where we're at in Los Angeles County, it's 1.25. That makes a big difference. Sure does. And I know that you and I are both licensed in different states. So different states have different tax um, brackets as well. So you really need to be aware of what it is that you're looking at when you are on different websites. That's why the app is perfect because it's catered to exactly what you need. Absolutely. And not only that, but you can call us, you can email us, you can listen to the podcast. So if you uh, can't catch this show every Saturday, you're listening to us for the first time on radio and you want to be able to go back and listen to other episodes, you can listen right through the phone app for the podcast. You can, like I said, you can email me, call me, text me, you can do whatever you want through this phone app. It's pretty awesome. But the calculator is my favorite part of the entire thing. So again, that is one way that you can uh, get in touch with us. You're going to text the word mom to 36260. That's text mom to 36260. You will get your link by text and you will click on that and you will save it to your home screen. So next thing that you can do is you can uh, follow us on Facebook. If you guys prefer Facebook over YouTube, everything that we stream goes live to YouTube on Wednesdays. It also goes to Facebook. Many of the workshops don't actually go live. Those are actually just uploaded as the separate pay- playlist for the Homebuyer Workshop 2021. So if you want to actually watch the workshops, you do need to go to YouTube. And again, please subscribe to our channel. It helps us so much. And make sure you turn on that notification bell to know when all of these videos 
videos go up and when we are coming on live. Um, and then obviously you guys can call us. It's 844-935-3634. That's 844-WE-LEND-4-U. And then um, Google us, Yelp us, check it out, see our reviews. And hey, if you've got a review to give, you guys feel that this is really good information. We're bringing you this free education. We're not charging you a dime for it. We're doing all of our consultations by phone and they're all free guys. So what do you do? You call, get on the calendar so you can talk to us for free. Learn, 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 learn for free. Um, but if you guys like it, please, please give us a Google or a Yelp review. That really does also help us quite a bit. We want to get our our voices out there. We want to get our names out there. We want people to know that we're here. And we want everybody to have the benefit of learning all of the information that we're providing. Mm -hmm. So really, we appreciate that. But now you know how to get a hold of us. And um, we're going to take you through... Mm, oh, look at that. That's closing costs. Oh, he's got the wrong one up. Okay, well, let's go. We're not going to do that one. I actually made one that was specific for today. Oh, all right, we'll hold there. on. That's all right. We're getting, we're getting there. Oh, there, there we go. There it is. I love oh, that the one. bus benches. I love those. <laughs> but do you see who's on the bus bench? I do. It's Phil Dumpy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck was that? Was the name of that show? I cannot even remember I right don't now. Even know, but it's about as old oh, as Modern I Family. Remember. Modern yeah. Family, because he was like the yeah, agent in is. Modern <laughs> Family. So the most important thing that you guys need to do in your home buying um, is pick the right realtor for success. It really, really is important. So uh, just pretend you guys have finished the workshop, you've gotten pre-approved, you've got that pre-approval letter in your hand, you are ready, you are ready to go shopping, you're ready to get to it. I love it. Now you've got to find the right, you've got to find the right real estate agent, you truly do. And if you don't know who to pick, uh, we have a lot of, uh, suggest we've got a lot of referrals that we can give you. We've got many real estate agents that we work with. Uh, we've got, you know, I've got a great girl that's in um, Georgia. She's very close to Savannah. Uh, I've got a wonderful woman that is in Texas. She's right. She's near San Antonio. She goes a pretty big dis distance around San Antonio. Obviously, we've got uh, real estate agents in every nook and cranny of California. Um, so if there's a specific area that you're looking for or state that we're licensed in and you need that referral, please feel free to ask. Honestly, we we work with the best. We expect the best. We provide the best, and we only work with the best. So I, I can absolutely, with full confidence, tell you that I can refer you to somebody that you will be very, very happy with. So um, if you need that referral, please feel free to reach out. And trust me, I get no compensation for the referral. I ask for nothing back in return. Mm -mm. There is no you know, referral fee that they're getting a lead from Mortgage Mom Radio to go sell you a house or to turn around and sell your house for you. I am truly working with them because I feel that I can give that referral in confidence and I'm not going to be embarrassed by the end of the transaction. And yeah. there have been a couple that I felt were, you know, every now and then you yeah. think they're doing great and then you refer them somebody and it's just a disaster yeah. and, and I, like they're gone. Yeah. I, I cannot ever send that referral again. I mean, it was just not yeah. acceptable. Right. So, I mean, the people that we are working with now, we have done hundreds of transactions with at this point, And I don't have one that I would not feel confident giving you a name and telephone number and telling you to call them. Yeah. It's important because it reflects on you. Oh, I, so absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's like a real estate agent, right? Think yeah. about that. I mean, how often mm -hmm. do you refer a lender and then yeah. how does that go when that lender doesn't perform? You know, I, I always tell people that I work with, I'm only as, as good as the people that I work with. So it's like sometimes I can't choose, like sometimes we can't choose escrow and title. And if we have a really bad escrow and title company, if we can't do anything about it, we can try our best to make it as good as we can. But, you know, you you really have to work with great people and realtors are so important to work with the best. That is, I cannot stress that enough. Lenders and realtors, escrow and title, they come and go. But that realtor, if something happens, you want them there. Same thing with that lender afterwards. Yeah. You want to be able to call them. Yeah, absolutely. So let's get into the important stuff, huh? So you're selecting your realtor. Okay, so the, <laughs> have your own representation. Why do you think I have that on there? A lot of people love to say, oh, I'm going to sell my house for sale by owner and I'm going to save myself some money. And it's such a big misconception. Um, we rarely see, we call them FISBOs for sale by owner. It's just an acronym. We rarely see them nowadays because um, legally, lawsuits, man, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are, you know, lawsuit happy. Uh, just with disclosures and things like that and, you know, just to protect yourself as a seller, it's really not an optimal way to go right now. Um, but think buyer, cause this is a home buyer workshop, right? So why yeah. would I have that there for the buyer? 
Well, for, for any buyer, yeah, but well, yeah, but for a seller, yeah. sellers try to hook buyers in and say, you don't need a realtor. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to do this without agents. And so there's that aspect of it. And then for a home buyer, they come in and they go, oh, okay. And the seller will say, well, I'll save you a bunch of money because I don't have to pay a commission. For a buyer, it's really bad because the seller doesn't know what they are supposed to do and aren't supposed to do. And as a buyer, you want to know everything about that property. You want to know what's wrong with it, what they've done to it, if they made modifications. Not only that, but there's a lot of different inspections that can be done that you may not know as a home buyer. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a call today and they said, I want to know about the property. I want to know, you know, if it's a fixer, I want to know, you know, on a home inspection or a termite. And if you don't have representation as far as a realtor goes, you don't know who's supposed to pay for a termite inspection, who's supposed to pay for a home inspection, who's supposed to pay for an NHD report, who pays escrow fees, who pays title fees, who pays my loan fees, does the seller pay my closing costs, can they pay my closing costs? So there's so many questions. What happens after I close? I you know, wound up paying all this money that I didn't think I was going to have to pay, and the seller paid absolutely nothing. Well, that's what you agreed to because you didn't have representation. Right. Even on new home sales, the biggest misconception is, oh, you're a buyer and you don't need an, uh, a realtor. No, a lot of new homes companies will actually work with outside lenders and they'll also work with um, right. with realtors. So the reason that I also had this on there, which all of that is absolutely yeah. valid. I mean, so that I mean, there's so many reasons why you have representation, right? Uh, but the biggest thing that I see is I've also seen buyers believe that they can get their offer accepted over another buyer, especially in today's hot market where mm -hmm. there's 15, 20 offers on a home. And a lot of buyers think that they're going to have the edge up Good if edge. they work with the listing agent on the property rather than having their own realtor yeah. representing them. Yeah. And they, they, they believe that. And although that, that could happen, the hard part about that is that a real estate agent who has signed a contract with mm. a seller, mm. their number one first priority, first contract signed was to, to that seller. seller. It wasn't to that buyer. Mm -hmm. So even though they could try to be yeah. that middle person and represent both sides, they still have that original yeah. first obligation to that listing agent yeah. or to that seller. Yeah. So so when a listing agent signs a contract with the seller, um, they are representing the seller. They're not technically representing the buyer. So when you go in and you sign a listing agreement, you're signing it with the seller and the seller is paying that listing agent the commission. That listing agent is the one who then pays the buyer's agent. So you, if you walk in and you do select the listing agent, just know that their loyalty first is to that seller to get them that highest price. So it's not always a good decision. It's not. And and the way that I look at it too is, you know, if you don't bring in your own real estate agent that is going to be taking care of you, mm -hmm. protecting you, mm -hmm. that you're not paying for as a buyer. That's what right. another thing a lot of yeah. buyers don't realize is that like you just mentioned, the seller is paying the listing agent. The listing agent is offering money to other agents to bring a buyer Correct. in, right? Yeah. So you're not paying for that agent of yours to represent you. So it's basically like you're throwing away an attorney. Correct. Right? Yeah. You're throwing away a free, a free, you know, attorney. So yeah. do not do that. Go in there, have representation, you know, and, and make sure that you've got somebody that's on your side, making sure that everything's going the right way. It's yeah. at least in my opinion, I feel that that's important. It is. And if you're a buyer that's really concerned about, you know, even your agent representing you and has nothing to do with the listing agent, there are buyer broker um, representation forms out there where the broker that you're working with as far as a buyer's agent can represent just you. So, and still be paid, you know, by the seller's agent. Yeah, seller. absolutely. So, all right. So that was a good one. Again, if you guys have questions, you want to get on the calendar, you want to talk to Heather, because she is I'm the here. realtor to talk to. It's 844-935- three, six, three, four, give us a call, get on the calendar, schedule an appointment, and you guys can talk with Heather. Make sure that you do, if you want to spe talk specifically about real estate, selling or buying, um, you know, and, and you have these real estate questions, agent questions, make sure that when you call, if you do get the call service or you get Matt that's answering the phone, just make sure that you are specifying that you'd like to talk to Heather. So, uh, make sure that you put that in there. Obviously I'm always here and, uh, yeah, I think I know about as much as she does. So <laughs> you guys can talk to me too if you want, but, um, but Heather's a good one. I'm telling you, uh, lots of experience. So, all right, so let's keep going. So the next uh, bullet point I have here, Heather is they need to have a vested interest in you. So yeah. the agent has to have that. So what do you need? What do mm -hmm. you want? What can you afford? Okay. Do you need 
closing costs from the seller. What is your maximum sales price approved, right? So I find a lot of times that agents don't listen, Yeah. right? Yeah. So it's really important to me that when I'm talking to somebody and I'm telling them what my needs are, it's like I get in fights all the time with my car broker. <laughs> And I don't buy, I mean, the car I have right now, I've had for like three years, right? And I really don't live very lavishly. I mean, I've mentioned that many times. Mm -hmm. Like I'm living in a, you know, normal 1800 square foot single story Mm -hmm. house built in 1982 in a tracked cookie cutter, you know, Valencia house, right? So I'm not like, you know, but, um, you know, I've had the car for three years and every time I do buy a car, it's great because I can call him, tell him what I want. He will actually negotiate with the dealership and I go down there and sign paperwork. Yeah. I don't have to meet with anybody. Mm -hmm. I don't have to go through the whole, you know, uh, back and forth for four hours over the price. He does all that for me. I literally just get there, sign it. They take my car. I pick up the new one and I leave. So it's nice. I, and I like working with him. So anyway, so I've had this car now. We were three, three and a half years at this point. And I was thinking, ah, maybe I want a new car, you know, and I'm calling him up and I'm talking to him and I'm like, yeah, I really like this one. Um, you know, but you know, and he's, he, he's like, oh, well they got this over here. I'm like, I told you I don't want black leather. Like I'm over it. Every car I've had for the last three cars has been like black leather. I'm like, I don't want black in the interior, you know? And then it's like, he's sending me another thing. I'm like, I've had a white car for the last three cars. I don't want a white car, you know? And it's like, they're not listening. Yeah. Well, it's one thing when you're fighting with your car guy and you'd be like, okay, never mind. I'm not buying a car. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> or, okay. You know what? I'm just going to get online. Cause I can go to, you know, Honda's website and I can see all of the you know, dealer. Yeah. So part of it with, okay, cars, COVID, there's just, again, not a lot of inventory kind of say as houses, um, but they didn't make very many cars while everything was shut down. So right now it's like the slim pinkens on inventory. Right. So anyway, I get it. He's just trying to show me what's available, but I, I'm like, okay, but with a house, <laughs> you're going to live there. Yeah. And you're going to live there for a long time. Yeah. So you have to make sure that your agent is listening to you. You, ha- they, if there is a certain neighborhood you want to be in, if yeah. you want Melarus or you don't, or you want HOA dues or you don't, or there's a certain elementary school that, or school district that is important to get your kids into, or there's a certain room count, or um, you don't want to have to fix the house when you want to buy it, turn, you know, turnkey, yeah. right? Yeah. Or you want to fix her. Like they have to hear you. Yeah, and and some agents are really good about it, and they they'll they'll tell you if what you're asking for is just not available. They'll say, "Look, this is just not available," you know. But I can do this. But then there's a lot of agents that, you know, are looking to sell whatever they can, and they'll send you a list. We as agents can actually sign you up on our MLS systems for you to get listing notifications, and it's nice because we can put it in exactly what you're looking for. So if you're telling me. I want a three bedroom, two bath home in Valencia with a pool. I can tell my MLS system in Valencia, I want, you know, three or more bedrooms, two or more bathrooms with a pool and send it to you. And you can see exactly what's there. And um, you might get a three bedroom, you might get a four bedroom or a five bedroom, and you can decide what you want. And I will tell you, look, I'm going to send you just three bedrooms or I can send you three bedrooms or more and let you decide. Right. Um, But then there are some agents that are like, oh, no, you have to have four bedroom or more. And you're like, well, there's nothing out there for me to look at. Right. And you're like, I'm trying to buy a home and I know there's no four bedrooms in my price range. Right. Or, hey, we've got this really great two bedroom, yes. but you could always add a third one. Yeah. This you know, is a, a I mean, we know you've got triplets, but you know, the two bedroom would work. And then yeah. if you were, and you're going to get yeah. it at this price, yeah. but then if you add the bedroom, <laughs> then it's going to go up in value. I mean, you just made even more because now your house is now yeah. a three bedroom, not a two bedroom. And it's like, um, what? Yeah. Or my favorite is, I know you're not looking for a fixer. Look at me. But <laughs> Debbie's so excited. She's so excited. Road. I'm Debbie's an ex-girl. so excited about it. If you guys are listening Saturday morning, you're totally missing the fact that I'm pushing buttons. We're going through this PowerPoint presentation. I'm moving things around. <laughs> but yeah, you know, oh, I want, I, you don't want a fixer. And all of a sudden they're showing you something that needs carpet and paint and a kitchen remodel and a bathroom remodel. And you're like, oh, this is not at all what I wanted. Right. And you know, oh, it's a great price. And it's like at the top of your budget. And you're like, I have no money left over to renovate. And it's just totally off the mark. Right. Yeah. So again, just super important that you are on par with your agent and you guys are 
understanding exactly, you know, they understand what you need and what you're looking for at the price that you want. And you're not getting stuff that you don't want because that's a waste of your time. And then in the meantime, you might be missing something that you really, truly are looking for because you're out looking at a fixer that's at the top of your budget that you don't want or a two bedroom with yeah. triplets that you don't want. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, the other thing, too, that a lot of people don't know is that, yes, uh, Realtor.com, Zillow's and yeah. Redfin's and all of those, they do get, uh, you know, when a house comes on the market, it does show up on that website. Sometimes. It, sometimes. Not so right. it's up to mm-hmm. the real estate agent when they're putting it in the MLS to actually select whether or not it's, it's going to go out to the rest of those yeah. social media platforms, right? Or yeah. websites. Um, but what you also don't realize is when it says new, it's actually already a minimum of like 24 hours old. Yeah, they, it takes a little while for some of those sites to catch up with our MLS system. So those sites are kind of auto-populated, so to speak, based off of our MLS system. So if you're working with an agent and the agent has you on an auto email, you're going to get that notification pretty much instantaneously the minute it hooks on to our MLS system. If you're on a Zillow or a Redfin or something like that, you're going to be delayed. So somebody might already have looked at the property or four or five people or something in the they time. They might, especially right there. now in this market, they yeah. may already have seven offers. Offers oh, by yeah. the time it shows up as new listing. Yes. Right? Yeah. So it is really important if you've been thinking about buying a home. I get it. Everybody mm-hmm. likes to window shop. It's scary to pull that trigger. You don't want to make that phone call to that real estate agent. Right. You know, you don't want to start getting, you know, you're going to feel like you're going to be bombarded or hounded about, you know, looking at homes. Just literally call and and get, you know, and if you need a referral again, we can do that for you. I've got agents in all different MLS systems that can help you. They'll talk to you about what you need. They'll set you up with what your specifics are that you're looking for, and they'll set you on that drip system and leave you but see, that's the thing. I, you know, it, that again goes back to really having your agent know you, and maybe they definitely want to call you and get a referral because they know that your agents aren't going to do that. If a client calls me and says, "Look, Heather, I'm just getting a feel of what's out there. I have no idea. Can you just set me up so I can get a system?" Yeah, sure. Here's the emails. Call me if you see something you like. Text me. Email me. No problem. I know when a client tells me, I just want to get an idea of what's out there. I just want to see what's available. They're just looking and I am not going to bother them. I know the agents you're talking about. Yes. And if you don't want that, just call Debbie. We'll give you a referral for somebody and we will tell them, look, this client is not looking to be bombarded. They just want to see what's out there. Yeah. And that goes with really, they need to understand you, be vested in you and understand you are just trying to get an idea of what's out there. Yeah, absolutely. So um, next side of this uh, PowerPoint presentation. And again, if you guys have questions, you want to get on the calendar, you want to talk to us, you want to get pre-approved, you want to talk to Heather, you want to know what you, what should you have questions about the real estate agent and herself. Love it. Uh, Give us a call. Call the office. It's 844-935-3634. This would be a great time for you guys to hit that like button if you haven't done it already. I hope I'm bringing you much educational information and everything that can help you get through your transaction a little bit less stressfully. Um, If you have not subscribed already, subscribe to our channel, please, right here on YouTube. If you're listening on Saturday morning, you guys want to see more, you want to see what we're doing, you want to actually watch us do this, uh, you got to go to YouTube and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn on that notification bell so that you are getting all of the content as we upload it through the system. Um, But okay, so here we go. Ready? Experts in their marketplace. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is so important. And I'm going to read off my list okay. and then I'm going to let you talk about it. Okay. Okay. So, um, does the neighborhood have mellow roofs? Does the property have HOA dues? Does the condo complex have litigation? Is the project FHA approved? What are the school boundaries for each home we view? Yeah. So for those that aren't aware what mellow roofs is, sometimes it's also called a landscape maintenance fee. Um, some new home developments are coming up with more creative names because people kind of caught on to Mellow Roos. It's an additional... Uh, They're special assessments. <laughs> yeah, it's an additional uh, <laughs> charge on your taxes. And usually it's charged um, monthly. It does affect how much you can qualify for a home. So it definitely needs to be noticed to you up front. So if a property has a Mellow Roos, it's something that you want to know because it's going to affect how much you qualify for. Generally, it runs several hundred dollars. I've seen some up to six and seven and eight hundred dollars a month. I've seen them as low as under a hundred dollars a month. Just depends on where they are, 
how old the Melarus is and what it's for. Yeah. And it and it is part of your property tax bill. Yes. So it, it is something that if your taxes are impounded, you're gonna pay it monthly. If your taxes are not impounded, you're gonna pay it with your two property tax bills per year. Um, but it does make a huge difference. So for me, when I'm actually getting somebody pre-approved, I'm talking about, are you looking at a single family? Are you looking at a condo? And then when they tell, or townhome or duplex or two unit, right? But whatever it is that they're looking for, then I'm running the numbers, not with the assumption that the property has Melarus. And I'm letting them know that when you're out looking for a home, you need to be specific with your realtor. Does this property have mellow roofs? The reason that I say experts in their marketplace is that that real estate agent, if they are good at what they do, they are truly an expert in that area that you want to work, you know, where you want to buy, then they know the answer without even looking it up. They know which tracks have mellow roofs. They would know which tracks do not. And they know for a very good amount of them already know a very close percentage to what that Melarus is going to run. So if you're talking to somebody that has absolutely no clue or no idea, that is not their marketplace. They are not the expert in the field in your neighborhood that you want to be in. So very, very important. And that goes with the same thing with HOA dues. Yeah. And HOA dues um, for homes sometimes, you know, it, it, where we're at in Valencia here, they can run anywhere from $50, $60, you know, on up to $100. But then some of them, when you get more. into the condos and townhomes. You or, know, well, yeah, but a lot of these new properties yeah, are 200 new properties are 200 If mm-hmm. you want to be on the golf course, 400 450 you know, and, and same thing with the condos and the townhomes. And that totally impacts what you're going to qualify for because you are considering that for sure in the amount that you're going to be qualified for. So if somebody's showing you a house, just because it's an older home built in the 80s, especially here, does not mean it does not have an HOA due. So you really definitely need to know. And sometimes there's different sections of homes that are built when the builder's building. They'll build one section where the HOA due is maybe $100, but then on their newer section, it's $150. Well, again, it's a big difference. So you definitely need to know, is there you know dues and how much is it on what section? Because it's going to impact how much you're going to qualify for because it's a monthly reoccurring. Um, Then also with the complex, does it have litigation going into condos? That also can affect how much you qualify for. Um, It also can affect your HOA dues. So usually if the condo complex or townhome complex is in litigation, they will have a higher HOA due because they have to raise it to hire attorneys or sometimes pay off if they're, you know, fixing something here in Valencia after we had an earthquake in 94. Mm -hmm. After that earthquake, a lot of the condo complexes out here had litigation and they had special assessments that were in addition to the um, the dues. Yeah. So that definitely affected it. Also, if there's litigation, we need to know because maybe the complex isn't FHA approved. Mm -hmm. And if it's not FHA approved and you're an FHA approved buyer, I should not be showing you houses in that complex. Well, even if there's litigation, there's going to be a problem with a conventional yeah. loan too. So, yeah. you know, there's, there's a lot that comes down to that, but again, you need to be working with somebody that knows the area that you want to live in and they know the condominium mm-hmm. complexes and they know which ones, if you're a vet, that condominium complex yeah. has to be VA approved or you cannot get your VA loan in it. If you need to use an FHA loan, that mm-hmm. complex has to be FHA approved or you cannot get an FHA loan in that complex. So it is very, very important, again, that the real estate agent that you're choosing is an expert in the area, in the neighborhood that you want to buy in. If they don't know, that's a problem. So you want to make sure that you are working with somebody that truly knows and understands everything about where you want to be. You know, how bad would it be if you bought a house and the realtor told you, oh, yeah, yeah you're in the boundary for this school district? Oh, yeah. And, they and you're one street away all the time. You're one street away. You yeah. close the house and you're like one street away and you're yeah. not part of that. You go to the district. You're all excited to set those kids up. And, yeah. uh, you're not part of our district. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, what? And sometimes they have, you can go onto the websites and they have all the boundaries drawn. Cause we get this question all the time. I want my kid to go to, especially like in Granada Hills. Cause mm-hmm. Granada Hills is an amazing high school. I want my child to go to this. Okay, you need to call the school directly and find out because they constantly change the boundaries. As more homes are developed and more kids are going into that district, they will change the boundaries at a whim's notice. And the boundary that's on their website may not necessarily be the correct boundary. So if you're really concerned about what school your child's going to, a really good realtor will tell you, please call and do a little bit of homework and find out from the district themselves, is this home in the boundary that you're looking for? Yeah. No, I like it. That's great advice. Very good advice. Um, So here's my question. Is there anything on this list that you feel 
mm-hmm. that I did not mention or bring up that's important to talk about when you're trying to select the right real estate agent? When you're trying... Like, did you forget anything? Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Like, do you feel like I forgot anything? Do you feel like we caught everything? We gave it a... Yeah, no, I think just somebody who's looking out for what you you really want in your best interest um, and just really isn't going to rush you. Um, Do they know the neighborhoods? A lot of times I hear, oh, you know, my cousin's friends, uncle's brother's, you know, buddy Bob is a realtor. Okay, well, does Bob know the area? I mean, it's nice sometimes to work with family or friends or whatever, but realistically, this is like going to be one of the biggest, if not the biggest investments of your life. You really, really want somebody that knows the area. You don't want to find out afterwards that you have Melarus or right. that you have HOAs. So right. I, I think you got it covered. Mike, I think you're good. You can actually put us back up to full screen because we're done with the PowerPoint at this point. Um, but, you know, I no, and I agree with you. And I think that it is so important. One of the big things, too, that we didn't really talk about. I mean, I mentioned it on the slide, mm-hmm. but we really didn't talk about it. And I think it's something that we should is a lot of times I qualify people, pre-qualify them mm-hmm. and I'm pre-qualifying them um, for a number that they're not necessarily comfortable going to. So just because I can qualify them for a 600,000 sales price Mm -hmm. doesn't mean that they want to buy 600. And so when I talk with a client and I'm getting them pre-approved, I'm going through, where is your comfort level? What is the monthly payment? Where, where do you want to be? If we're including everything, your taxes, your insurance, if everything Mm -hmm. rolled in HOA dues, Melrose, everything, your entire house nut, what is comfortable for you? And they give me a number and then I'll say, okay, and we'll back down. We'll back out mm-hmm. of where I was able to get to maximum and say, this is the price that you need to be looking in to obtain what you want. Now, many times people will, in all fairness, go out there and look for what they want at their affordability level and decide, I don't want this. I don't want this. We're going to have to go up. <laughs> right. And they're going to talk to the CPA and then they're going to find out that they get to write things off and that they're going to get a bigger tax mm-hmm. return at the end of the year. And it all works out and they go to a little bit higher payment than what they originally started with. Yeah. But I want that person to find that out. I want them to figure that out. I don't want a real estate agent pushing them saying, yeah. well, you're qualified for 700 yeah. and they just immediately start sending them listings for 700. It happens all the time. Right. I want them to, if they're, if they're comfortable at 500, mm-hmm. send them listings for 500 yeah. and below. Right. And then if they don't see what they like, they can call the realtor and say, mm-hmm. all right, this isn't working for me, bump me up to 550, yeah. you know, and then at least those, those start to come. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I just, I, I don't like it when a real estate agent knows what the maximum is and that they just automatically go there and start pushing for mm-hmm. it. It really, really is important that you are comfortable with your payment and that you know that no matter what happens, that that is a payment that is obtainable for you that you can make. Yeah. Because if, you know, it doesn't matter what happens with the market. It doesn't matter if property values drop. It doesn't matter if interest rates go up. If you're in a fixed rate, 30 year loan at a payment that you can afford, you can stay in that home for as long as necessary. Even if that payment or even if that, you know, property value drops, it will come back. It will eventually go past where it mm-hmm. stopped the time before. There will be equity in it. Yeah. You know, you do, if you're looking at buying your first home right now, whether you're in your, you know, 20s, 30s, 40s, or 50s, I'm going to tell you right now, even in your 50s, you still got a long time ahead of you that even if the market fell, it's going to come back before you pass away someday. And that's, you know, it's, it's just, it's going to be part of inheritance to your kids. And if you're in your 20s, 30s and 40s, it's going to be part of your retirement goal. You know, it's, it's so there's never a bad time to buy. I just want to bring that up. Um, you know, we had that question actually, Mm -hmm. I think it was yesterday. Somebody called in and they asked me that question, you know, should I even be thinking about buying right now today? Um, you know, is, is it a good time to buy? Prices are so high. There's never a bad time to buy. There's only a bad time to sell. And Larry's actually been on with me, the mortgage dad, and he, that's like his favorite line. And I love it. I've stolen it from him. (laughs) Um, but it is the truth, right? It, where the problem is, is the bad time to buy is when you, think that you're going to buy something for a quick flip, but here's the catch. You can't afford it. Yeah. So you're buying it thinking, oh, I'm going to get in there. I can't afford it, but I can carry it for a couple months, but I'm going to do this, do that. And I'm going to flip it for, you know, quick cash. You yeah, know what? Bad. You do, do not, do not buy homes for a quick flip unless you're in the business as a quick flipper. Yeah. You know, I that is that. your job, yeah. right? Your job is that you're a quick flipper. Yeah. Um, buy a home even if it's an investment property, 
you know what they can rent for, you know what the unit would rent out for, you know how much your payment's going to be, you know that you're going to cover the mortgage with the rents that you'd receive, you know that you've got a little bit extra left to the side, you feel comfortable with the fact that you might end up having to do some work to the house, some maintenance, some repairs with a renter in there, you know that there's a possibility that you might not get paid rent for a little bit, you know that there's a possibility that maybe it might be vacant for a couple of months, whether you're doing rehabs or, you know, tenants moved out, um, you know, it, no matter what the the position is right now for the purchase do it knowing that you can afford it make the correct decision do not if you are feeling shaky in your stomach about it it's probably not the right thing to do yeah I agree with that 100 percent yeah totally agree with that and it, it, it just goes back to like you were talking about getting pre-approved for a price that's why I think it's important for buyers to talk to the lender first yeah um you know if an agent sends you sometimes to a lender and says, oh, qualify them, the lender will call the agent back and say, oh, they're qualified to 750. Okay, well, now you're stuck at 750. Versus if they talk to the lender first and they say, I'm comfortable at 700, you can start at 700. And, you know, I've had clients before that have been pre-approved for 750 and said, no, we want to stay at 650. Okay, fine. I have no problem with that. That's yeah. where you're comfortable at. Well, and when somebody comes to me and they and they tell me specifically where they want to be in price range and mm-hmm. we work through those numbers and we know what that monthly payment is that they want to have, I'm actually giving them a pre-approval letter based on our conversation. Right. So there's actually been quite a few times that a real estate agent has called me back and said, okay, we've got this offer, but we've got to go like $10,000 more. Like, can, can they do it? And I'll open up the file and I'm like... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> their debt <laughs> ratios chose. are so low. Like they decided that that was yeah. their number that they wanted yeah. to be at. So yeah. just remember too, that if you talk to your lender and we give you a pre-approval letter based on where you want to be, and then you decide that you want to go up higher, make sure you call your lender back and say, <laughs> hey, I'd really like to go yeah. to this number. Could you give me a new pre-approval letter? Or hey, could you call my realtor and let them know it is okay mm-hmm. you know, for me to go up to the yeah. next level? Because <laughs> we're doing what we can to help you, to protect you, to give you know, yeah. try to keep you where you want to be comfort level wise. So you need to make sure that you're communicating with us so that we can get that information out there correctly. Yeah, otherwise the realtor's like, wait, we can't go this high. <laughs> right, exactly. Hey, so once again, if you guys want to give us a call, it's 844-935-3634. No matter what time of day or night you guys call, we are answering the phones. We've got a call service that does it after hours, and we've got our great Great, great guy, Matt, that answers them during the day. And you guys can get on the calendar, schedule an appointment, schedule an appointment with me, schedule an appointment with Heather, schedule an appointment with Heidi, Carrie, Cindy, any of the girls, schedule an appointment. We're here. <laughs> yeah, they're here. They're here. All the boys, no, don't. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Um, you guys want to get that great handy dandy phone app I told you all about, text the word mom to 36260. Check out our website, go to mortgagemomradio.com. You can send me a message right through the website, through the contact us button. You can actually go through, you know, get an interest rate quote, get a a home value quote. It's going to take you through a funnel where you're going to add all your information in there to give us a good sense of who you are. It will shoot that off to us through email and we will reach out to schedule an appointment with you to have a conversation, do a consultation. Um, We want to get you on the calendar. We want to do a consult. We don't want to do an immediate phone call right now. You called in, boom you get transferred. I'm going to tell you that the best thing to do is to actually schedule out the calls. And why do I do that? Well, because it gives time. So we're literally putting that time away for you. You are getting one hour of time that you can ask any questions that you have. We can go through all of your details in full, whether you're a refinance, should you refinance? What would a rate be? What if I pull cash out? What if I pay off all these debts? How much interest will I pay over 30 years? How much interest will I pay over 15 years? And trust me, that can be a very good hour long consultation or whether you want to talk about buying a home. We want to make sure you understand the process. We want to take you through, well, how much are you making? Where is your credit score? Uh, How much are your debts? Do you have a car payment? Do you have student loans? Hey, guess what? But if those student loans are deferred, we still have to know. So you better, you know, like make sure you know what is your balance on those student yeah. loans because we're going to qualify you based on your balance. Even if your payment is deferred, we still have to hit you for some debt. So, um, you know, it's really, really important to do that. So get on the calendar, schedule the call. We're going to text you 15 minutes before so you don't forget. You know that we're calling you at that time and you've got our attention and we're going to talk all about you, take notes about you, get you off the information that you need to get that 
that application started once you're ready. And then we're going to sit back and we're going to wait for you because we do things on your time. We don't hound. I know it's scary to pick up the phone Mm -hmm. and you feel like people are going to start bugging you. Same thing. If you go to my website and you put your information in, you feel like somebody's going to bother you. You're going to get an email from us right away that says, you know, if you're contacting us through business hours, we're going to reach out to schedule a phone call. Um, and you can reply to that email and you could say, I don't really want to talk on the phone. I'd rather do it through email. Totally cool. I love that. I don't want to talk to you either. Um, (laughs) (laughs) uh, but if you want to talk, you know, Matt's going to reach out, he's going to call or, you know, Heather or Cindy, um, but they're going to call and they're going to reach out and they're going to schedule an appointment with you. And then you're going to have that consultation. So, um, it, it, it really is cool. Give us a call. It's 844-935-3634. I'm pretty sure that we are at the end of our hour, but it was a good one. Home buyer workshop unit number 12, all about how do I pick my realtor? Uh, this is Heather again, Heather Kilpatrick. She is new to my team. I love it. Not new to the friendship, not no, new to the business, not new time. to the game, <laughs> just new to the team. Yep. Woo. Keep Excited. building them girls. <laughs> anyway, we, um, thank you so much for watching. We love you all and we'll be back next week. Have a good one. Bye. Bye-bye. Debbie Marcoux is licensed by the Department of Business Oversight under the California Residential Mortgage Lender Act NMLS ID 237926. Also licensed in Arizona, 0941504, Florida, 76508, Georgia, 69178, Illinois, 031.0058339, Nevada, 57237, Oregon, Tennessee, 184373, Texas, Washington, 237926. Heidi Cycle Points, DBO, 1666881, Arizona, 101648. She's a mortgage mom. She can get things done when you're in need and don't Pick up the phone and call mom.